Welcome back, everyone. Ready for another deep dive? Always. Awesome. Today, we're taking on a real mind bender, Einstein's theory of general relativity. Ah, yes, a classic. And the best part is, we're using all the articles and research you sent in. So get ready to explore how gravity warps the fabric of space and time. We'll be looking at the orbits of planets, the bending of light around distant galaxies, and even those tiny tremors in space-time from black hole collisions. Sounds like we've got a lot to unpack. We do. Okay. But first, I think it would help if we started with something everyone's familiar with. Gravity. Yeah, good idea. We all learned about Newton and that apple, right? Right. The idea is that objects with mass attract each other. But it turns out that's not the whole story. Uh -huh. Einstein came along and gave us a whole new perspective. Yeah, Newton's law of gravity was revolutionary for its time, but he couldn't really explain why objects attract each other. Hmm, that's true. But Einstein, in his theory of general relativity, proposed that massive objects actually warp the fabric of space and time around them. Okay, warping space-time. That sounds a little, uh, science fiction-y. I know, right? Can you break that down a bit for us? Sure. Imagine a trampoline. You place a bowling ball right in the center. It creates a dip, right? Right. Now, if you roll a marble across the trampoline, it won't travel in a straight line. Uh, it'll curve inward. Exactly. Towards the bowling ball because of that dip. Okay, I'm starting to see it. So are you saying massive objects like stars and planets create these dips in space-time? Precisely. They warp the space-time around them, and other objects, like planets orbiting a star, just follow those curves. Like they're rolling along the contours of the trampoline. Exactly. All right, I'm following so far. But you keep saying space-time as if it's all one thing. I thought space and time were separate concepts. Well, we thought that for a long time until Einstein came along with his theory of special relativity. This theory shows that space and time are actually intertwined. They form a single fabric, and we call that space-time. So instead of three-dimensional space plus time, we have this four-dimensional space-time fabric. Precisely, and what's even crazier is that gravity can warp and stretch that fabric. And that's where general relativity really comes in. It builds on that idea from special relativity. So massive objects aren't just in space-time. They're actually changing it. Exactly. And the more massive the object, the stronger the warping effect. Mm, I see. Well, that leads to my next question. What evidence do we have to prove this warping is real? I mean, it all sounds pretty wild. Well, let's look at something called gravitational lensing. I imagine a distant galaxy so far away that its light takes billions of years to reach us. Now picture a massive cluster of galaxies sitting between us and that distant galaxy. Got a distant galaxy in the back, big cluster of galaxies in front. Right. Now general relativity says that that massive cluster warps the space-time around it. Right. So the light from that distant galaxy as it travels toward us has to pass through this warped space-time. So it gets bent? Sort of like how light bends through a prism? Exactly. But instead of a prism, it's the gravity of that galaxy cluster that acts like a lens. And this bending of light can create some pretty wild effects. Like what? Sometimes we see multiple images of the same distant galaxy, as if that galaxy cluster is acting like a cosmic mirror. Wow. So are there any specific examples of this? Have astronomers actually observed this? Oh, yeah. There's a famous example called the Einstein cross. It's a quasar. A quasar. Uh, yeah, it's a super bright object in a distant galaxy. And because its light passes through a massive galaxy cluster in front of it, we see it as four separate images. It's like direct visual evidence that gravity works space-time, just like Einstein predicted. Wow. That's pretty convincing. So if even light, which travels at, you know, the fastest speed possible, can be bent by gravity, right. that must mean space-time is pretty flexible. What other evidence do we have that this warping is really happening? Well, let's talk about a planet a little closer to home, Mercury. Astronomers, using Newton's laws, could pretty accurately predict the orbits of almost all the planets in our solar system, except Mercury. But what was wrong with Mercury? Its orbit had a slight wobble, a tiny deviation that Newton's theory just couldn't explain. Sounds like a job for Einstein. Exactly. And Einstein's theory of general relativity was able to explain that wobble perfectly. You see, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, and the sun's enormous mass warps space-time significantly. This warping affects Mercury's orbit, causing that tiny but measurable wobble. So even a little wobble can have huge implications. It can. And here's another fascinating example. Earth's rotation actually twists space-time around it. Whoa, hold on. Earth is twisting space-time. Yeah, think of it like spinning a ball in honey. The honey swirls around the ball, right? Right. 
Well, Earth does something similar to space-time. No, so Earth is dragging space-time along for the ride. Okay, that is mind-boggling. What are the implications of this twisting? It's subtle, but NASA's Gravity Probe B mission actually measured it, and it confirmed Einstein's predictions. This twisting of space-time is another piece of the puzzle that supports general relativity as a solid explanation for gravity. So, we've talked about light bending, planets wobbling, and space-time swirling around Earth. Yeah. Are there any other effects of this space-time warping that we should know about? There are, but I think we need to take a break here. All right, I'm ready to hear about those other mind-blowing effects you were talking about. Well, let's move from those subtle effects we see around Earth and planets to something much more extreme. Remember how we were talking about massive objects warping space-time? Yeah, like those galaxy clusters bending light. Exactly. Now imagine an object so massive, so dense, that it warps space-time infinitely. That's what we call a black hole. Black holes. The ultimate cosmic mystery. The regions where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. Right? Exactly. And that incredible gravity comes from their unbelievable density. Imagine squeezing the entire mass of our sun into something the size of a city. Whoa. I can't even imagine that kind of density. I know, it's mind-boggling. And that density warps space-time so much that it creates a singularity. It's basically a bottomless pit where the laws of physics as we know them break down. So black holes are like cosmic vacuum cleaners, just sucking up anything that gets too close. But how do we even know they exist if they're invisible? Good question. We can't see black holes directly, you're right, because they don't emit light. But we can observe their effects on their surroundings. For instance, if a black hole is part of a binary star system. A system with two stars? Yeah, we can actually see the other star being pulled and stretched by the black hole's gravity. So it's like watching a cosmic dance where one partner is invisible. That's a great way to put it. And we can also detect the powerful X-rays emitted as matter spirals into the black hole, heating up to incredibly high temperatures. So we see the black hole's effects on the stuff around it. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Black holes are definitely mind-blowing. What else has general relativity helped us to understand? Well, there's another prediction of general relativity that's really fascinating. Gravitational waves. These are ripples in the fabric of space-time itself, caused by the acceleration of really massive objects. Imagine dropping a pebble into a still pond. A pebble creates ripples that spread outward. Precisely. But instead of water, it's the fabric of the universe that's being disturbed. These ripples, called gravitational waves, travel outward at the speed of light. And for decades, they were only a theoretical concept. Until 2015, when scientists finally directly detected them. I remember that. You got it. It was a huge discovery. The Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LEGO, made history by actually detecting these elusive waves. And guess what caused those first gravitational waves? What? Two black holes, each about 30 times the mass of our sun, spiraling into each other billions of light years away. This collision released a crazy amount of energy, sending those ripples across the universe, eventually reaching Earth. It's like we suddenly gained a new sense, a way to hear the universe rather than just see it. That's a great analogy. Gravitational waves carry information that we just can't get from light alone. They allow us to study events that are otherwise invisible, like black hole mergers or the collision of neutron stars. Wow. So we're listening to the universe's most extreme events. What else have these gravitational waves revealed to us? Well, since that first detection, LIGO and other observatories have detected dozens more events, not just from black holes, but also from those neutron star collisions. And each one adds to our understanding of these incredibly powerful objects. It's incredible that we're living in a time where we can observe these ripples. Einstein's predictions, confirmed over a century later. Okay, what other wonders does the universe hold? Have you ever heard of pulsars? Pulsars. Yeah, aren't those the rapidly spinning neutron stars? The no. ones that emit beams of radiation, like cosmic lighthouses. That's right. They're what's left after a massive star goes supernova. Its core collapses, becoming incredibly dense. Remember that analogy of squeezing the sun into the size of a city? Yeah, it's hard to forget. Well, that's a pulsar. Okay, so we've established that they're incredibly dense. But what do pulsars have to do with general relativity? Pulsars are like natural laboratories for testing general relativity in extreme conditions. Mm -hmm. Their gravity is so strong and they rotate so fast that they create this unique environment where we can actually observe the effects of Einstein's theory. So they're like mini black holes pushing the limits of general relativity. Exactly. And one recent study used a double pulsar system. So two pulsars orbiting each other. 
Yeah. And they were able to confirm several of general relativity's predictions with incredible precision. Wow, that's impressive. What predictions were they testing? Well, for example, general relativity predicts that the pulsar's orbits should shift over time due to those gravitational waves they emit. Right. And it also predicts that their pulses should be slightly delayed and bent as they pass through the warped space-time around the other pulsar. It's like watching a cosmic ballet, where the dancers are these incredibly dense pulsars, and every move is dictated by general relativity. I love that analogy. And the results of the study. The data matched the predictions of general relativity with an accuracy of 99.99%. That is incredible. Einstein's theory still holds up, even in these extreme environments. But wait, you mentioned earlier that general relativity also has some real-world applications. It does. I thought it was just about understanding the cosmos. Well, it's definitely about that, but it also has some surprisingly practical uses here on Earth. Real-world applications. Okay, I'm all ears. Tell me more about those. Well, let's think about something you probably use almost every day. GPS. The GPS. What does that have to do with general relativity? Those GPS satellites orbiting up there, they rely on extremely precise timekeeping to figure out where you are on Earth. They send signals down to your phone or your GPS device, and by measuring how long it takes those signals to arrive, the device can calculate your location. But here's the thing. Okay. Those satellites, they're further away from Earth's gravitational field. Right. And that means time actually moves a little faster for them compared to us down here on the surface. Whoa, hold on. Time is different up there. Yep. It's a tiny difference, but it's big enough to mess up GPS calculations if we don't account for it. We're talking nanoseconds, billionths of a second. But over a day, those nanoseconds add up and your GPS could be off by miles. So thanks to Einstein, and his mind-bending theory, I can find my way to the grocery store. I never thought I'd say this, but relativity is actually pretty practical. It is. And while GPS might be the most obvious example, there are tons of other implications, too. It's all about understanding how these abstract ideas connect to the real world. Right. So we've talked about planets, black holes, even those tiny pulsars. It's incredible to think that one theory developed over a century ago, can explain all of that. It is, isn't it? It just shows how interconnected the universe is. It makes you wonder, what other secrets are hidden within this theory? What questions are scientists still trying to figure out? Well, one of the biggest challenges is understanding how general relativity works with quantum mechanics. Oh yeah, we touched on that earlier. Quantum mechanics governs the world of the very small, like atoms and particles. And general relativity explains the large-scale universe, right? Right. And the problem is these two incredibly successful theories, well, they seem to clash at certain points. Like general relativity describes space-time as smooth and continuous. But quantum mechanics says that at the smallest level, everything is uncertain, fuzzy. So which one is right? Ah, uh, that's the million-dollar question. Hmm. Both theories have been amazingly successful in explaining their own areas. But when you try to apply them together, like in a black hole, mm. or at the very beginning of the universe, they just don't work. It suggests there's something deeper we're missing. It sounds like we need an even bigger, better theory, something that can explain it all. Are scientists working on that? They are. They're exploring things like string theory, loop quantum gravity, mm. all sorts of mind-bending ideas. Wow. It sounds like a really exciting time for physics. So much left to discover. It really is. And, you know, it's not just about the big questions like how the universe began or whether there are extra dimensions. It's also about those practical applications, those technologies that improve our lives. True. OK, as we wrap up our deep dive into Einstein's universe, what's the one thing you hope our listeners will take away? I'd say never lose that sense of wonder. Einstein's thought experiments, his willingness to question everything, that's what led to his incredible discoveries. So keep asking questions, keep exploring. Who knows what incredible things we'll find out there? Well said. And on that note, we'll leave you with one final thought. If space-time can be warped and stretched, could there be other dimensions hidden within it? Entire universes tucked away, beyond our perception. Keep thinking about it. Until next time, keep diving deep.